I like it. Woo! Thank you. We need this assistance. We need people to go crazy in here. The reason why we need people to go crazy in here, oh, I'm sorry. We're about to start this contest. So I need everyone to take their seats because we're about to start this in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, Madam Toastmasters, Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Welcome to the Central South 2012-2013 Table Topics and International Speech Competition. Let's get excited. Woo! excited is because we got the best of the best that's going to be competing in tonight's event. An epic battle, one like no other, with only one that will reign supreme <laughs> and will represent the Central South Division in the district competition. Isn't that exciting? that are here to witness what we're about to go through today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up our Central South Division Governor as she explains everything that's going to happen inside of this contest. Toastmasters distinguished guests of all shapes and sizes, please help me welcome our Division Governor, Charlene Reinhardt.
Okay, everybody, are we excited to be here? Yes. Yes. Are we excited to finally get started? Yes. It's a little late. It's kind of hard to put this kind of stuff together. We understand that we are. We do apologize, but we want to get this thing right going here. Now, unlike Theo's excitement about trying to make lots of noise, what I don't want to hear tonight making noise is this. All right. So let's go find these right now. Everyone says, oh yeah, I turned it off, and they didn't. So let's make sure they're off or on vibrate so as not to distract anybody who's up here speaking. Everyone good with that? Everyone good? Good? Excellent? Great. We made one little announcement at the beginning. There is food down the hall, but we're not going to get to that until the break anyway. No food's allowed in here. Drinks are allowed in here. No food. But the food's down there at the table. We can have that during the break. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Is there a question? Yes, sir. Oh, I was told drinks could come in here. Okay. Water. Sorry. Oh, water. Oh, water. Sorry, that's what I meant. If anyone's bringing up some Cosmos, okay, then I'll get some in, uh, in the hallway later on after this is over. We're going to have two contests tonight. The Table Topics Contest and the International Speech Contest. The first contest will be Table Topics. When that contest has completed, we will then have a 10-minute break and the International Speech Contest will start. We have had all the contestants, timers, ballot counters, sergeant arms, they've all been briefed. Everyone's aware of the Toastmaster International Rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if time permits during the one minute of silence. Thank you very much. With that said, let the contest begin. I now give the speaking order for the Table Topics Contest tonight. Contestant number one, Koshal Gupta. Contestant number one, Koshal Gupta. Contestant number two, Jack Brennan. Contestant number two, Jack Brennan. Contestant number three, Annie Long. Contestant number three, Annie Long. Contestant number four, Matthew Fox. Contestant number four, Matthew Fox. Contestant number five, Matt McLaughlin. Contestant number five, Matt McLaughlin. Contestant number six, Maria Matarelli. Contestant number six, Maria Mattarelli. We will have the Sergeant at Arms escort contestants two through six out the door now. The, the waits will go for the contestants if it wasn't said before, I'm not sure. We'll have the contestant walk in the door. I will give the question twice. They will come up, shake hands, then the stage is theirs and the timer will start when they begin. All the contestants out of the room. And is okay, Kojol going to be there? Okay. We are now ready to hear from the Table Topics contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you, please, or when we get to that point, please advise me when the one minute is up with the green card. After all contestants have spoken, Judges will have all the time they need to finish their ballots. We will now begin the Table Topics contest. Contestant number one, Koshal Gupta. The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? Begins. Koshal Gupta. Mr. Toastmaster, district officers, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. What would you say is the most precious thing in our country? You might point to our laws, you might point to national monuments, our traditions, our cultures. I would say you should also think about our national parks. A long time ago, 
President Roosevelt made the decision that a lot of land would be set aside and preserved for the good of all future generations and, of course, for the good of the land itself. And according to a Ken Burns documentary, this was the best decision that America has ever made because we live in a land that has so much natural beauty we could spend a lifetime looking at it. And I've been very fortunate to see places like Yellowstone National Park, a place that's not like anywhere else in the world, a place so alien and strange and beautiful. So that's the kind of thing I'm going to do this spring. Visit more of these wonderful national parks that have been preserved for us by a man who had great foresight and love of nature so that he could pass it on to future generations of Americans. Mr. Toastmaster. Contestant number two, Jack Brennan. The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? Jack Brennan. ceremonial courtroom for the Northern District of Illinois, the United States District Court, surrounded by these photos of what I can only assume are past and present justices, or perhaps guys that would really like to wear robes. I can't help but feel a little bit underdressed right now. <laughs> Obviously, I myself am not wearing a robe. That would be pretty weird if I just walked down the street dressed like that. <laughs> but I'm not even wearing a tie right now, which I've noticed that many of the other contestants are. So please don't hold that against me as I stand here before you with my button down and my slacks. <laughs> the situation is, where I go to work, I don't have to wear a tie every day, and I thought it would be a bit inappropriate for me to go into the bathroom after work, throw on a tie, and then come over here to look a little nicer. I can't show up to work dressed in my pajamas or wearing a stocking cap, a lot of you are probably getting me arrested, but I can wear a little bit more of a relaxed type of garb. What I'm going to do to celebrate spring, though, is not wear outfits like the one that I'm currently wearing. Instead, I'm going to throw on a tank top and walk around the city. <laughs> It might not sound like a very exciting thing for someone to do, especially considering that I'm not in very good shape, so I'm not showing off some big guns or anything. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that word in the courtroom, I apologize. <laughs> but I definitely think that it would be fun for me to walk around in a tank top in the city. It would allow me to start on my summer tan, so if I had a farmer's tan, it would start in more of a tank top type shape, rather than having only the lower part of my arms tan. That's definitely something important. What with the risk of skin, excuse me, skin cancer these days, can't really afford to have parts of my body that aren't getting gradually adjusted to the tan. And I've had many sunburns, I'm a pale Irish boy, don't want to get too many of those. So anyways, I figured I would just give you guys a little glimpse of who you're going to see walking around Chicago this spring. It's going to be me. I'll be in the tank top. Thank you. <laughs>
Contestant number three, Annie Long. The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? Annie Long. Contestant number four, Matthew Fox. The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? Matthew Fox.
Boy, I'm sweating in this coat. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you. Spray starts, the first thing that's coming off, the coat. <laughs> Contest master, fellow Toastmasters, and those of us who suffered through a long winter. Come join me as we go out to the forest preserve, just north of the city in Skokie. I remember finding myself there years ago. I'm getting out of my car, the snow has melted, the grass is green, and the sun is shining. Is this Chicago? <laughs> Going out into nature is one of those magical moments for me, and I hope that it is for you too. After we've been stuck inside for so long, that moment of breaking free, of taking off our coats, not just literally, but figuratively, from the challenges that winter has for each of us. The sun's not out, the grass, if it's there, is brown and dingy, and there's gray everywhere. It's terrible. But that magic moment, when you're walking through the forest and a deer goes off in the distance, or maybe you see the first buds on the tree, and it's like, I forgot what this was like. I forgot what that connection was. Now that time down by the stream for me is most magical. It comes with feelings of renewal, feelings of joy. Whatever's going on disappeared that moment that not only I took off my coat, but that I stepped into spring, that I allowed the sun to bask in the great glory that we all enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, when spring comes, I'm gonna take off my coat I'm going to get up to that forest preserve in Skokie, and I hope to see you all on the trail, because when you're there, nothing else matters. Contestant number five, Matt McLaughlin. The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? Matt McLaughlin. Mr. Toastmaster, we look at our calendar today. It says Thursday, March 28, 2013. Is that deceiving? With me tonight, I have my heavy coat, my hat, and my scarf, <laughs> and my gloves. But I know, I just know in my heart that spring will be here soon. In fact, they're even talking about possibly having it be here next week. Wouldn't that be nice of spring to be here in Chicago next week? I have a couple of things in mind. Every morning when I leave for work, I keep staring at bikes in my garage. My bike and my helmet buckled dormant to the handlebars. My son's bike and my daughter's bike. My eight-year-old daughter keeps asking me, when are we going to be able to go out? When, when can we go out? When can we go riding on the trails? 
So I hope to do that soon. I don't know if I'll be able to do it next week, but I hope to do it soon. On a more mundane front, there are approximately 63 different things that need to get done around the house and the yard. <laughs> My wife keeps talking to me about, we've got to do something with the shed, we've got to get the hose uncoiled, we've got to get the kiddie pool set up. Well, that's not going to happen in the spring. That'll be a June thing. But there are any number of things. There might even be some leaves from fall stacked up against the side wall. So I'm looking forward, sort of, to tackling that. <laughs> Lastly, Monday is April, and it might be a little chilly, but they're going to be yelling, play ball, at a couple of places. Down at Sox Park, a week from Monday at Wrigley Field. Spring means baseball. The Cubs, the White Sox, and for Chicago baseball fans, maybe this year, is the year. That's a rite of spring as well. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. Contestant number six, Maria Mattarelli. The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? The calendar says spring has started. What are you going to do when spring weather actually begins? Maria Mattarelli. temperature or a certain climate, and then it does this thing where it fools us. Now when spring actually starts, and I no longer have to wear my fur coat with my little furry hood and put on my earmuffs and my gloves and then my extra sweater underneath my coat because I'll wear two or three layers every day, what am I going to do? Well here's what doesn't make sense. This is very unfortunate because I'm going to be traveling I travel a lot for work and I travel a little bit for fun. I'm going to go to really nice warm climates as soon as summer starts. Now what's interesting about this is I just got back from Manitoba, Canada in January. And I've got to tell you, that's not the ideal place to be in January. Although I did pick up a very nice pair of mittens and they had a little Canadian leaf on them so when you put your hands together, put a whole leaf together. <laughs> At least now I can wear my Canadian mittens here in Chicago. Because i got to tell you, this weather is just about to kill us, isn't it? We get that peekaboo where the sun comes out a little bit and then no light for days. And this is Chicago. We're not in, like, a sweatshop in some small country. Why can't we just have clean air and sunshine all the time? Oh, we're not in California. That's right. All right. I always did wonder why my parents chose the Midwest, because we get the worst of all the seasons. We get the humid summers, we get the bitter cold winters, and those lovely two months in between. So although I'd love to say that I will be relaxing at the poolside and drinking some fancy little drinks with the pink umbrella and maybe a little pineapple on the edge, 
I think what I'm going to do is be, as my schedule would have it, flying to other nice warm climates as soon as it turns warm. <laughs> Contest master, all the judges bounce up.
very quick before we take a break and start the international speech contest. First, we want to find out about the exciting District 30 conference that is coming up in, I guess, a little less than a month now. And who better to do that than the Public Relations Officer for District 30, Don Williams. Don Masters, district officers, and guests. Hasn't this been a fantastic contest thus far? Yeah. yeah. I think all our contestants deserve a hand. Everyone in this room should be in contest mode. We've gone from club contest to area contest, and tonight the division contest. And the winner tonight here will represent this division at the District 30 Spring Conference, which will be April 26th and April 27th. Not only will the contest be the 26th and the 27th, our keynote speaker is someone that's very special in the Toastmaster world. Her name is Patricia Fripp. How many in, the, in this room attended our fall conference for the district? How many of you enjoyed to hear our keynote speaker, Craig Valentine? Now imagine meeting the person who taught him to become the better speaker that he is today as, and charged him $4,000 a day <laughs> to hone in his skills after he had already won the world championship. This woman, Patricia Fripp, has spoken around the world. She's known as the coach of professional speakers. She has a group that's well known throughout the world as the Lady and Her Champs, where she holds seminars throughout the US. Members of the team are Craig Valentine, Ed Tate, who's also been a guest at our past conferences, and Darren LaCroix. Now imagine being a teacher of these excellent speakers. This is a conference you don't want to miss. Also appearing as a keynote speaker at our conference at the Saturday evening dinner is a well-known speaker in our district, Johnny Campbell. Again, this is a, con a conference you don't want to miss. And you, as well as our witnessing history at this division contest, because the winner of our international contest tonight will not only go on to the district conference, but could possibly be the next world champion speaker. Because if you win at the district, you go on to Cincinnati, Ohio in August to represent this district as our international speaker and possibly the next world champion. So people, if you haven't registered for the conference, please do so and represent this division and cheer on our winners today. Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, man. 